Thank you very much for the opportunity to present here today. I will be discussing technical pearls uh, and the setting of delayed laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy for a patient who presented to us after explant of an adjustable gastric band. Uh, these are our disclosures. Currently, there is no uniform consensus as to whether adjustable gastric bands should be converted to sleeve gastrectomy and a single versus two-staged approach. Our institution has definitely heavily favored a, a two-staged approach in this scenario. Um, and 60 to 70% of our volume of bland to sleeve conversions does happen in this manner. This is partially related to surgeon preference and experience, but also, um, as everyone knows here, intrinsic challenges that are encountered intraoperatively often with uh, dense adhesions. Um, as you can see here in this graph, um, bands are not particularly popular at Mount Sinai. They rec uh, overall represent a very small percentage of our volume. However, we are definitely taking care of patients now, largely from outside institutions who need them explanted and or converted for a variety of reasons. To that end, I'm highlighting this um, ultimate two-stage conversion from band to sleeve, again, to talk about important operative technique. So our patient is a 59-year-old female. She presented to us initially with a BMI of 43. She had a laparoscopic adjustable gastric band in 2008 at an outside hospital. This was subsequently removed in 2015. And then after some insurance changes came to us uh, interested in having a sleeve gastrectomy. As you can see, she had multiple uh, obesity-related comorbidities. This is our standard uh, laparoscopic uh, technique for uh, sleeve gastrectomy. We enter with an optical view technique in the left upper quadrant. Our Nathanson liver retractor goes in the standard subxiphoid position and then um, obviously the stapler through the 15 millimeter super umbilical port. Adhesiolysis um, to the liver is commonly uh, required. Uh, here we do this very carefully starting with some sharp dissection with the laparoscopic scissors. Some blunt dissection is often commonly required, which we like to do with either bowel graspers and even sometimes find success using the suction tip irrigator. Um, here the adhesiolysis is continuing between the medial aspect of the stomach and the underlying portion of the left lateral segment of the liver heading toward the caudate lobe. There are some additional uh, mental adhesions that are encountered near the anterior aspect of the fundus, and these are uh, easily taken down using the bipolar electrocautery device. We uh, mobilize the greater curvature in a standard fashion. Again, we prefer to use uh, this bipolar electrocautery device just because of the precise blunt dissection capabilities, but also the precise electrocautery. But depending on surgeon preference, ultrasonic shear certainly can be easily used. Uh, for mobilizing the posterior fundus, um, we're taking down short gastric vessels here carefully using our bipolar device. And as the dissection continues toward the superior aspect of the spleen and near the angle of hiss, we're taking care to avoid both underlying uh, splenic vessels here and the pancreas. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we stay anterior to the phrenic vessels that you can see here in the middle aspect of the screen. Most of this dissection is done with the bipolar device, but some sweeping motions uh, bluntly can help medialize the, the fundus as well during this portion. For creating the sleeve gastrectomy, uh, we uh, use a 40 French uh, suction calibration device. And our standard practice is to use a 60 millimeter um, black reinforced staple load for the first two firings, which you can see here. And then we commonly encounter these rogue, or what we like to call criminal staples, that we remove just to ensure that subsequent stapler firings have good apposition between the stomach wall and don't misfire. And then as our standard practice is, we use 60 millimeter reinforced purple loads for the remaining aspect of the sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, for taking down the gastric plication, this is definitely the most tedious portion of this procedure. We place the stapling device here just to get a sense of where the adhesions are, and then we start to bluntly mobilize this area. As you can see, we are starting to identify the plication. And in this portion of the procedure, we like to avoid using any type of electrocautery or ultrasonic device just because we want to avoid any underlying thermal injury. So most of this dissection is blunt as well as sharp dissection, which you see here with the laparoscopic scissors. But as the dissection continues, um, we are able to delineate our tissue planes a bit better and then are able to use 
our bipolar device to uh, mobilize some of the overlying uh, anterior fat here. Our dissection continues bluntly. Um, and while it's tempting to use a stapling device here, we like to avoid that because of our fears of leaving behind any type of ischemic gastric tissue that could leak. We do identify the uh, plication sutures and ensure that those are transected. Um, as the dissection continues bluntly, you'll see this plane of scar tissue nicely between the entire plication. And then the rest of the uh, atheziolysis continues sharply until the plication is completely released. For completing the sleeve gastrectomy, uh, we assess whether a black versus purple load will be needed for our subsequent stapler firings. And here we feel comfortable using a, a purple load, which again is reinforced. And then our, this is the, near the angle of hiss where we use some blunt dissection with our 10 millimeter finger dissector. We can use that somewhat superiorly and then we bring it around posteriorly around the superior aspect of the remaining fundus just to ensure that we have a clear shot for our final stapler firing. And again, this is done with a 60 millimeter purple reinforced load and then our sleeve is completed. We routinely perform upper endoscopies after all of our sleeves, primary and revisional, not only to perform an intraoperative leak test, but also to assess for intraluminal bleeding or any other uh, complications like, like stricturing or narrowing. Um, and in this case, we had no leak and did not leave a drain. Um, so in conclusion, for our technical pearls in this scenario, uh, we do recommend minimizing the use of electrocautery, careful dissection near the spleen, with particular attention to avoid the phrenic vessels and splenic vessels, precise and complete takedown of the gastric plication, along with uh, identification and transection of the plication sutures to further delineate anatomy. Again, we recommend avoid using stapling devices for taking down the plication. Um, and also, we believe in routine upper endoscopy. Um, and leak tests for all of these cases. Uh, I thank you for your attention and would certainly be happy to take any questions. Yes, sir.